Hi, it's your girl Crystal Calvin. I'm back with another video. And it's kind of, it's, it's basically going to discuss the closing that I did on a property a month ago and how I was able to walk away with, yes, walk away with almost $53,000. I posted it on social media and it got a lot of attention and it got a lot of people asking a lot of questions. So I was like, what better way is it to make a video explaining everything, explaining like how I even got started with my very first property, how did I become a landlord, how did I end up with two properties and what made me sell at the end and how I walked away with almost 53 thousand dollars so if you're interested and you want to know more before we jump into it please like please share and please 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 subscribe because anything that i jump into and anything that i do i put it on this platform i want people to know i want people to be able to succeed and if i got the answers to it and i jump into something and it worked for me i'm gonna share it with y'all so again stay tuned like share subscribe let's get into it we're gonna start with where i basically was before i jumped into my first home like i served in the military for four and a half years and i will never regret that that's the best investment in myself that i could have done like i never had to worry about student loans they covered my bachelor's they've uh shoot certs and everything has been paid from through the government but um not only that, I was getting financial aid. I was getting a stipend from the military for like books and any type of supplies that I needed for school. Um, it was just the benefits and the like the opportunities that they're throwing at soldiers are just unlimited. And um, I think the issue that a lot of people have is being disciplined, having that type of money, but telling yourself, I'm still going to live below my means, regardless of how much money I see in my bank account. I think that's the number one issue that my generation and the generation behind me is struggling with. Having the funds, but not feeling like you have to use them. Or if you're going to use them, use them and feed them into something that's going to benefit you. Like, I can't stress to you enough how important credit is. And there's a lot of people out here telling people it's not and that as long as you got money, you're good. I'm telling you now, there's people out here, there's millionaires out here, and they're using their credit, trust me. Everything they're dipping in is not by the use of their money, I'm telling you. Half the time, people who are making millions have made millions because they're using someone else's money. So if somebody out here is telling you that your money is more important than your credit, they's a lie. <laughs> so when I come into any type of income, any... um. It could be anything. Like I said, the stuff that I was getting from the military just by going to school, I was paying off any type of debt I had. I had a little Nissan Altima and I paid that thing off. Like that was my main focus. So living below my means and focusing more on what I needed versus what I wanted. So what that mean is you ain't always got to have them lashes. You ain't always got to get them $200 braids from them Africans. You ain't always got to go get your nails done every two weeks. You don't always need them J's. You don't always need that car. Whatever the case may be, like, live below your means. Stop caring about what other people think about you when you walk out the front door. Because guess what? Them same people don't pay your bills. They don't pay your bills. <laughs> and I had to teach myself that too. So long story short, I just disciplined myself. I lived below my means. My credit score went up and I was just like, okay, now's the time to purchase my first home. And it took a lot. It was a stressful journey. It probably took about a month and a half. It kept pushing back closing and all this other crazy stuff. Y'all, th this is one thing that I got to discuss that nobody told me about before I jumped into purchasing a home is this thing called a earnest fee. They always, if you're a veteran, you always hear, oh, you'll never have to pay anything down. You got the VA loan, you'll never have to put anything down, which is true. You'll never have to come to the table with a down payment, but there are other fees that are included in order for this transaction or this process to be completed. And one of them is an earnest fee. Now it's rare 
that there's not an earnest fee attached to your contract. And this earnest fee is created by the seller. What it is, is it is an amount that the seller comes up with that the buyer has to pay in order to jump into a contract and bind it. So this money is basically a payment that is set by the seller for the buyer to pay to basically prove that they're serious about the purchase of this home. So neither the buyer or the seller gets the money. Once the money is submitted, it goes to a third party, which is that third party usually throws it into an account that they call escrow, if I'm correct. If I'm not, drop that in the comment box for me. But I'm pretty sure it goes to like a third party, which is usually some type of attorney that has no relationships with either side. But anyway, they sit on the money. The only way the buyer would get that money back is if they decide that during their inspection, they find something, they're not happy with it, whatever the case may be, they're able to take their deposit back and leave. During, But it's only during that inspection period. Once you go past that period, your earnest money is locked. And if for whatever reason you decide that you don't want to go with that sale, earnest money goes to the seller. Oh, before I forget, there's another fee. It's called a VA funding fee. Now, the only way you can waive this fee, and again, this is a fee that you do not pay up front. It's attached to your loan. But if you have a disability, they have to waive that fee. And that ain't no little fee. That fee can be anywhere. I don't even know how to come up with the, the the number for it. But I know on my first property, I want to say it was at like 5000 and something, 4000 and something, something like that. But um, if you have a disability, and it doesn't even have to be set to a certain amount, you just need to have a VA disability letter just to prove that you have it. Give it to your loan officer and they will waive it. And let's say that you didn't have a disability when you purchased the home and they pulled it from you. And let's say after your purchase, you ended up getting approved for a VA loan. It still applies to you. Get that letter to your loan officer and they will send you that money in a check. This is right. It doesn't go to your loan. It comes to you in a check. Now that I think about it, I probably would have waited. <laughs> I could have waited. Now, now that I think about it, in this second house, I had I got my disability when I had the, the first house. So that's how I learned how the VA funding fee worked. I showed them um, my award letter for my disability, and um, they gave me the money uh, in a check. But originally, when I when I didn't have it in the beginning, they just attached it to my loan. Now I'm thinking I should have said that for my second house because when I told them that I had disability up front, they waived it versus me not saying anything and then waiting until after closing to send the letter and I would have got it in a check. <laughs> don't mind. I don't know if that's illegal or not. I don't know. I, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. Worry about those fees. With a VA loan, you don't have to put down a down payment, but you do got to worry about things like an earnest fee, inspection fee, and if you don't have a disability, a VA funding fee. And if you have a disability, remember to turn in your award letter to your loan officer. But I think those are the only fees besides closing costs and attorney. You got to pay your closing attorney fee, commission fee, if you got an agent and all this other type of stuff. So I moved into the house. I was in it for a year and I met my husband and he had, I had two kids at this time and he had three. So my little three bedroom, 1,660 square foot house wasn't going to work. So I looked for another property and, um, that's how I chose the house that I'm living in now. This one is a 4-3, and it's tw a little over 2,400 square feet. And um, when I was looking at this one, I decided to rent out the other one. So I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos because I didn't want no property manager or nothing. I wanted all my coins. I wouldn't try to share with nobody. So I fixed the property up, cleaned it, and all this other type of stuff. and. I got the tenants in. Like I said, uh, I refinanced the house. So the mortgage went from $1,086 to nine fifty. 
The tenants moved in. The rent was at $1,500. You do the math on that. They had to pay another $1,500 for a deposit. So they needed $3,000 just to move in plus $1,500 a month on a $950 mortgage. So I moved into this house. Tell me why I didn't I only lived in the house for like four months. I ended up having to move to Fort Stewart because my husband being stationed at Stewart. And uh, we ended up renting this property too. So now this mortgage was a little higher. It was at fifteen. Um, 1500 a month, 1530 to be exact. And we found tenants who started renting for 15. So we didn't really make, uh, we didn't really make much on it, but what it did was it helped us take care of the mortgage while we were down at Stewart. That's what it did. So it's still an asset in my name that I don't have to cover. I'm making someone else pay it. So then when I realized it's a seller's market and that I can profit from my first home, that's when I made a decision to sell my first home. And I was like, um, I took a risk. I, I quit my job. I came home. I paid the tenants to move out of this one. And then I started working on the other property, um, just painting it, changing out the floors and all this other type of stuff so I can go ahead and sell it. And I tried to do an FSBO. That's um for sale by owner, which is basically trying to sell your property without an agent. It didn't go so well. I mean, I'd only done it for like 30 days, but in my, I don't know, I just didn't want it to be where every month I'm covering two mortgages, two utilities, two different insurances. Like I was just ready to sell at this point. And I actually ran into a listing agent instead of asking for 6% commission, he was only asking for 3.5, which wasn't bad. It was better than six. So um, everything went smoothly. They didn't really ask for nothing crazy. And yeah, a month later, I made it to closing. And that check for, you know, almost 53K slid across that table. And I had accomplished some things. Like, y'all don't understand, like, how stressed I was. Like, I made a decision to quit my network engineering job and I wanted to just dive straight into real estate. Like I was taking a huge, huge risk. Like I had these homes in my names and I quit my job, you know? So, I mean, I had a savings and all this other type of stuff, but still, you know, you like, what if some it don't work or what if it doesn't sell? And I ain't gonna lie, I was getting tired of dealing with tenants, but um, it sold, everything worked out and I mean, when I quit my job, I wasn't just not doing anything. I actually um, jumped into real estate school with Maybaum Institute. Um, it was a six-month um, online course, and I completed it in four months. And just last week, actually, December 23rd, I passed my real estate exam or my, my exam to test out of the class. Yes. So now I'm just waiting on the institute to do all my paperwork and register so I can register to uh, actually take the state exam and actually be certified to be a real estate agent so I can really take off and really just dive into the things that I love. And I'm trying to make sure that I went over everything that I know as far as like any type of fees people don't talk about, the benefits that I got through the military, the VA loan, VA funding fees. I think I talked about everything, but what I really want you guys to take away from this, basically, like I said, I didn't have a lot of money starting out. I lived below my means and I stopped caring what everybody else around me thought and what they had. I stopped comparing my lane with other lanes. You need to be looking forward. That's it. That's it. What everybody else is saying and doing is irrelevant. If they're not paying your bills and they're not bettering you, cut them off. That's something else that I learned. Cut them off. If you got friends around you and they ain't, they don't have any ambition, they always negative. Anytime you talk to them, they always talk about somebody else. Cut them off. I'm 31 years old. I don't want to hear that shit no more. Sorry for my language, but I just don't want to hear it no more. And as soon as I grew up and I realized what was good for me and what wasn't, Things came easier for me. I wasn't stressing no more. I was dealing with depression, anxiety, and sometimes that stuff kicked back in still, but getting rid of all that negativity around me, I was able to breathe and I was able to focus 
and have the energy to tend to the things in my life that mattered. But we won't go any farther than that. That's straying from the topic of this video. Like I said, I just want to talk a little bit about the things that I've done, the things that I've found out, the knowledge that I've gained. And, oh, before I go, I, I will make another video soon. It's going to be on Toro. And it's going to, for anybody who's never heard of it, it's a uh, app that you can use to rent vehicles. And that's just another way for me to make passive income. So I actually traded in a truck of mine on Carvana because they were willing to give me 10000 more than what was left on the loan. Like, who wouldn't do, take that offer? And I decided to get two vehicles instead of putting all my money into that one. And I got a 2019 Nissan Sentra. And I'm going to rent it on Toro. The car note is only 130 so I'm pretty sure that app is going to pay that in some. Let's hope for the best. I won't go too far into that. Like I said, a month from now, or after a month of being on Toro, I'm going to make another video listing the profit I made on it, how I went about it, and just how my day-to-day -day activities on it went. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, please like, share, subscribe. Again, I come up here to talk about everything that I've learned, everything that I've done, because I, I want to be good and I want everybody else around me good. And if you got any questions or you want to hit me up or you got anything that you want to tell me that I don't know or anything on here that you think that I got wrong, please comment because I want to know. I never want to uh, steer somebody in the wrong direction or if you got any type of information that you think are better than me, please comment. Please comment in the comment section. And again, do not forget to like, share, and especially subscribe so you can see my next video on Toro because I promise you it will be worth it. In the meantime, <laughs> stay focused. Stop worrying about what you want and more on what you need and stop caring about other people who do not pay your bills, or fuel anything that you're doing. I will talk to you guys later. One more thing. Do not forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe.